because you have to actually, when you go to a golf club to say we want to do a tournament, you have to actually guarantee them a certain amount of golfers. Well, if you don't have that many golfers, like if you guarantee them 80 golfers and you show up with 50, you're right. still paying for 80 golfers. Mm. So if you right. don't have enough people to eat, at least pay for what you said you were going to do, then you're in the hall. So, but the first year, I think we actually made $5,000. Yeah, we actually made money. 4, we made money. <laughs> 4900 we made money. And we've been doing it now for eight years. We just had our, right. our golf tournament last Thursday. Mm -hmm. But we, we usually average somewhere between fifteen dollars and $20,000 that we raise. And all the money, all including the yeah, including the money that we put in to start it. Like our company goes ahead and sponsors the first part of it. Usually we mm. put in a couple thousand dollars to start it. And um, that's a tax write-off for the company. It's a benefit. It's a charity event. And you know what? We All the money goes to it. We, my mom that's looks amazing. for, like, she's always looking for a different type of research for spinal injury. She doesn't always put it to the same exact place. Uh, right now, they're doing a lot about the stem cell research. And mm -hmm. that's really important right now because it seems like stem cells do a lot more than people believe that they do. Tell us a little bit about that. And let's throw that at Rick because I know he knows a lot about <laughs> <Okay>. that. <laughs> Go for it, Rick. Stem cells are interesting. It's like the forefront of medicine. They think it's almost like science you know, medicine, they're so miraculous. They've done a lot of different things with stem cells and they've gotten to the point, they basically can recreate almost any organ in your body is where they've gotten to the point. They can't regrow like a leg or something, but right. if you've got a bad kidney, pretty much can do that. They've tested it on heart, um, heart attacks and they've shown that it can regrow part of the heart that was damaged in a heart attack. Um, so they've done a lot of research on these things and they're, they're just amazing what they can do with them. And one of the big um, misnomer, so that's not really a misnomer, but one of the Aaron people's thinking on stem cells, which is why the government's had such a hard time deciding whether or not to approve the research of stem right. cells, is people think they come from aborted fetuses and stuff. Right. But embryonic stem cells actually come from eggs that were fertilized for in vitro for people that had problems having children or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if someone would fertilize, let's say, 50 or 75 eggs right. and only used one of them, they're using the 49 other eggs that weren't used to have a child. So they're not really, I mean, I used to think they came from aborted yeah, fetuses too because they call them embryonic stem cells, so right. it sounds like they do. But they actually come from, you know, um, uh, eggs that weren't meant to be used. They were just, ended up being frozen. They would be thrown away sooner or later anyway. So what, what was important to me when I saw that was like, this is great. Why everybody's, you know, worried about the wrong thing because what they've been trying to do with stem cells is use them from the person's own body, right. try to cultivate them that way. But they're not as fresh, they're not as vibrant, so to speak. When they use the embryonic stem cells, they tend to—they're more energetic and they tend to create the thing they're trying to create more quickly. Um, I just think people don't know enough about it. Right. It's very confusing too, because it's kind of like gee whiz science. I mean, it's like this thing can go in your body, because basically stem cells—if they—they inject them into your body, and a stem cell searches for what's damaged in the body. I mean, it kind of sounds hokey, right. but it, it goes and finds what's damaged, and then it joins those cells and recreates itself to be like those cells. Like, let's say you have an injured liver, because from maybe, you know, whatever, some cancer or something, the stem cells will go find the liver cells, they'll become friends with them, so to speak, and they'll become liver cells themselves. So it recreates uh -huh. the liver that way. So it's, it's really, I mean... That's it, fascinating yeah, how that it works. it sounds, you know, like it, 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 it kind of sounds bizarre, but if you think about it, it makes sense because stem cells are what's in your body when it, it's born. So they're able to go around the body creating more of what you need to, you know, become a, an adult. But that's a topic that people don't choose to find out more information about. They just tend to listen to what people say and take that in and say, well, that's the truth, that has to be the truth, why would they be telling me anything but that, you know? Mm -hmm. So as opposed to going out and finding out more information about it, they're just going to go and take, you know, for face value, whatever everybody else is saying. And if everybody else is saying that we're creating these embryos for that purpose, pe the public's going to tend to believe it because why would exactly, they not? Exactly, I've heard where people think they actually create babies to kill them to get the stem cells. Right. Is, I'm, that would be, I mean, that'd be awful. I mean, nobody's ever done that. They just, they take cells that are, you know, weren't being used anyway. They don't actually create a living human being to, to do them. They're not cultivating right. embryos yeah. for that. Which almost sounds like a sci-fi movie in itself. But, yeah. what's, but what's really sad about that is people aren't realizing this isn't just to spinal heal spinal cord, injury. cord injuries. This is like, it's gonna help with Alzheimer's, it's gonna help with muscular dystrophy, right. it's gonna help with all types of things that are wrong with your body because as you see the stem cell, if it's gonna go in and look for something that's wrong in your body, it could help with cancers, it could help with anything. And to, to just throw that away and not help people that are living you know, and, and these people are going to suffer and die a horrible death, you know, because a lot of the Alzheimer's, the way that people die on that is just, it's horrific. 
Right. And if we could find a cure for the people that are living right now and help them live a better life, isn't that something our government wants? But I think a lot of people don't think, well, I'm not directly affected or by... Or it's not going to happen like, to me. Yeah, just exactly. like spinal cord injuries. I'm not directly affected by... I don't know anybody who this has happened to or right. who needs this. Why bother? I mean, I can't... I'm not going to sit there and get caught up in something that doesn't affect me, so why bother? Well, see, and that's the other thing that, you know, I'm really promoting... Being, uh, being the fact that I, I've entered beauty pageants, and, and the thing about beauty pageants, the, the, the disclaimer about that is, most of those women are doing beauty pageants to promote something that they believe in. I started with spinal injuries. I've changed it. I, I do a lot of stuff for spinal injuries, but on the same token, my big thing about life is, if everybody did one thing, just one charity event, or one, you know, act kind of, act, you know, kind of a, looking for one, you know, act of kindness, act of kindness is what I'm looking for. One act of kindness per year. What would that do to our world? What would that do to our community and our society? It would change 100% oh, for the better. Absolutely. Kind of like what goes around comes around. Treat absolutely. people how you want to be treated, and this place would be so much easier to live in. That's it. That's actually a great message. You know, just to you know, do something nice for somebody else. You know, I'm not talking, you know, you have to go completely out of your way, right. you know, and give up everything you own. Is there any other message that you think that the public should know about spinal cord injuries or stem cell research? No, I think, I think what you guys kind of covered it. It's just like get out there and, and help something because you never know when it will affect you. People right. are living longer now and the odds of people getting Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are way up there and that's a big, big problem I think in the future. So if you know if stem cell research could help that, which it, it looks like it can, it'd be a great a great thing for you to help with because you never know when one of your grandparents or when your parents might come down with it because people are living right. a lot longer than they were in the past. And it's also important to if you don't know enough about a topic, get more information. Get more information. Right. That's not going to hurt anybody, you know, by saying, you know what, I find this person says this, but I want to do a little more research. I want to find out a little bit more because you can always be more informed about anything. And I think. The public tends to choose to be ignorant about certain things, like I said, that don't directly affect them. Right. And you never know when, you know, in 30 minutes it could be directly affecting you somehow, God forbid, you know, but you can predict it would happen to you in a car accident. You know, Christopher Reeves can predict it would happen to him. And that opened the, the world up a little bit more, and hopefully it continues to do so. So anything else you'd like to tell us about? I think that that's pretty much getting to... No, it's just about covered it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your story. Right thank you for having us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today on Jessica, and I look forward to seeing you next time. If you need any more information, please feel free to email me at the email address in the credits. Thanks.